All right, so today is the first time I'm gonna be doing a review on a knife, not designed by a knife maker. It was designed by Michael Hawk, who has 20 plus years of experience as a special forces enlisted and officer, and he's also a survival expert. And uh, 20 years is a pretty big time to figure out what does and doesn't work. And uh, so he put everything that he wanted in a knife into one knife. And so it looks a little bit non-traditional. Once you learn all the features and how to use it, um, it kind of grows in you big time. Um, so let's check out the specs. Overall length for the Elite is 12 inches. The blade length is six and three quarter inches. The thickness is 3 sixteenths of an inch. The steel that it's using is 5160 spring steel with an RC hardness of 56 to 58. The blade itself is 13 ounces and with the sheath it's 18 ounces. Every portion on this blade was designed for functionality to the survivor. I'm going to do some tests on this knife, uh, probably a little bit more extensive on this knife than my other knives and that's simply because there's so many features that I want to show you guys. Um, but yeah, check it out. On the butt end of the knife there is a small spike and this was designed for poking holes in shells and coconuts if you want to keep the structure of the container. The butt of the knife also contains two hammers and one is a round hammer so you can you know crack shells and that sort of thing and then one's a flat hammer. The handle scales are black linen micarta and this is by far my favorite handle material as many of you probably already know. It's impact heat and chemical resistant, it stays grippy when wet and this one has a fire dimple in it and as you can see I've used it already and the more you use it the better it works because it gets polished on the inside. When I was testing out the fire spindle, I found out that it worked really well, which is uh, not surprising. Black linen micarta and all micartas are pretty heat resistant. And a really good thing is that it doesn't transfer heat into your hand, so your hand stays cool so you don't burn yourself. The knife also has an integral hand guard, which keeps your hands from sliding to the blade when you're tired, when you have like grease or something like that on your hands. Um, if your hand slides into the blade, you're kind of SOL. Moving from the handle, let's move on to the blade. The back of the blade has a flat part on the spine, and this is used for, you know, like a power assist, or it's also used for uh, batoning. Batoning with this knife is a little bit different from the way you would baton with another knife. Um, usually you'd hit on the opposite end. This one you hit towards the handle. On full-size logs, I found that I got a little bit of blade tipping towards the handle but on smaller diameters, like three inches and below, not a problem. The first part of the actual blade is made for whittling. So there's a little bit of an angle on it, which helps with the ergonomics of the human wrist and also makes it more efficient for whittling. I like the fact that he put an angle on it so my wrist can stay more at a natural position. I found that my wrist wasn't torqued or fatigued quite as much and I'm glad that he chose 3 16 of an inch because a quarter inch thick is a little bit hard for whittling in this sort of task. So for whittling it did pretty good. Um, right here where you see an angle change on the blade that is also really good for notching so making snares or making indents on your fireboard. On the front part of the blade, you'll see there's another angle change and it's uh, offset 17 degrees. You'll see this angle on a lot of knives around the world where they're a lot larger knives used for chopping and that's because the weight forward and the angle together make a really good chopping blade. When I was testing this knife, I was chopping on a very dry piece of cedar. The weight forward, again, and the angle did really well. Um, and also the fact that it's spring steel, it didn't transfer too much vibration to my hands. So it was also pretty comfortable. On the back of the blade, you'll see that it has a saw. And this saw is actually really good for making notches or cutting smaller diameter sticks. The tip was designed for incising. So puncturing thick skin of a game or ripping through a log, it's really easy to get this tip in to kind of wiggle stuff around. During testing, I made a wood bowl. In a survival situation, if you don't have a way to boil your water, you can do this. And for this test, I used pine, and the knife did phenomenally. The tip of the blade really got in between the rings of the wood, was able to split it and chip it off.
There's also a troughing point, which is really good for debarking a tree. You can make several passes at it in order to get to the inner bark. And last but not least, there is a backup blade. So if you're in a place where you can't get a, uh, a stone to improvise for sharpening, you have this blade. And this blade is a little bit steeper of an angle of a grind, so it's harder to dull. Um, so in the event of the entire blade dulling, you still have this as a backup and it'll do pretty good. The Hawks Hellion is designed for smaller users, so women, younger kids. One for the weight and two for the length. For me, it might be a little bit on the small side because my hands are a little bit larger, it's still on the larger side of blades and is a really good survival tool. So my take on this knife is that you can in fact have a knife with a ton of features and still have it be effective in every little aspect.